This is the Bamboo A1 and I've had it for over a month now and I love it, I think it's great. And the things that you love, you should bombard with gifts. Uh, so I've bought it some upgrades. I have done it. I have purchased the Bamboo Lab AMS Lite. And surprisingly, it's actually pretty light. Instructions, disclaimer and safety guidelines, AMS cables, screws, thing, second thing, cardboard, screw, screw doohickey, and finally, base, spool, thingy. Yellow spool thingy goes on yellow side. Green spool thingy goes on the green side. Imagine that. And that seems to be it for the setup. You just, oh, there's a zip tie on top. Now let's put it on the, on the machine. That was actually too goddamn easy. So now we just need to connect it to the, the A1. And I just realized it doesn't need a separate power cable, which is quack, quack. fantastic. It says to put it to the right of the machine. And that is the right. And now we insert the PFTE tubes into here. Uh, we need to take out this one though. How the hell do we take out this one? So apparently if you take some tweezers and push down on the black part, and pull up on the tube. Uh, oh, because I've got some, I still had some filament in there. So we can cut that. And now we can take these tubes and just put them into a here. And now we can also get rid of this. And then we take the cable and put it in the back here. So it's all plugged in and set up. Now we just need to find something to print and then add the spools and then print the thing. So I've been looking around for something to print and I really like this alien bot head thing. Uh, reminds me a lot of uh, that scene from Men in Black. So I bought the model into Bamboo Studio just to see how long the print would take. And with four colors at a 0.08 mil uh, layer line height, which is a lot, but it's going to take five days and 13 hours, which is insane. That's crazy shit. So maybe we try, maybe I'll try and see if I can bring it down to a reasonable time, but we'll see. A few moments later. So I scaled it down to 75%. I went with the three color version instead of the four color version, and I managed to get it down to 18 hours and 20 minutes, which I think we can manage. So let's add some filament. So we have gray for the gray, which goes on the one slot. So that goes here. It's supposed to load the filament itself, but I had the, I had the machine off. So I've turned it on. And then if we go to PLA, the one slot and then go load. All right, it's lit up here. Now it's loading. And you've got the old filament coming out and it's turning white. Actually, it's turning gray, not white. And that's the first one loaded. So now we'll just two more. I don't know if we have to load all of them on, if there's only three colors, but we'll see. Next is the green. I didn't buy the green on a spool because I'm dumb and can't read. So we're going to have to replace a spool and they're all full. So if we take the white off, shit, maybe we don't do that. Ah, oh, fuck it. Oh, no, 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 no. Bit of a, bit of a problem, but that's all right. Shit. Anyway, now we can load the green on. There we go, got it. 
And then there's just these tabs that you remove. And then this one goes on to number two. It's saying filament type unknown, which is weird because it is, it's a bamboo filament. Maybe it's because it's a, a matte green. It's like a grass green. So maybe it's a new color or something. And, or maybe it's because I used the white spool. I don't know, surely not though. A good thing seems to be as well is when I used to load it without the light, I'd have to repeatedly push it in. But now with the light, it just, it loads automatically without me having to, you know what I'm saying? Without me having to redo, like retry loading the filament. And the third and final color is gonna be the Peacock Galaxy Blue from Elegoo. So not a bamboo one, but we'll see how it goes. And all the spools are loaded. We've got the Galaxy Blue, the Matte Grass Green, which I'm not sure how that's gonna turn out, but we shall see, and just the regular gray. But I've noticed that the designers actually put this uh, brim around the model. And that made me think we might not need it because of this next upgrade, which happens to be this bamboo cool plate tack super, <laughs> too many words. Bamboo cool plate super tack which is supposed to keep the plate cooler, saving you energy. And it's also supposed to be super, well, tacky. Uh, so maybe we don't need the brim. We might not need the brim, but it only saves us two minutes total printing time. So we're just gonna leave the brim uh, on. And while we're here, we also need to change the plate type over to the super tech and we can slice that again and print it 17 hours and 50 minutes later and 206 grams we have finally the completed thing with our little uh, tower with our little filament tower here uh, so the problem is this thing is supposed to be super sticky and it's I don't know, that might be easier than I thought it was gonna be. Maybe not, hold on. Oh, yep, so that's come off quite easily. That's come off. If I put it like this, it might look like it's covering my face. Does that work? Does that look like it's covering my face? Yeah, it's actually coming off fairly easy so far. All right, these little fuckers. Oh, shit. I mean, that's supposed to come off like that, but it's left the brim behind. That one's come off completely. Just this one. There we go. Just a nail, no scraper needed. And so we've still got like a little bit of edging I shouldn't say edging, figured I said that. A little bit of a brim around the edge of the thing. So I'm actually just gonna take the, the scraper, the scraper blade and use that to take the rest of the brim off. And it's done and I think it looks awesome. The The only thing, right, is, is it prints this little uh, filament tower, which is fine, that's fine, but also, It prints that as well. Next up, we have this uh, cabinet. So I fucked up. I, I put these in the wrong. I thought I thought this this was wrong, but I was I was I was wrong. I just I, oh god. And the upgrade's done, and by upgrade, I mean I went from having no storage to some storage. Uh, the only thing that broke was this little screw lock thing, and it's the only one thing they don't give you a spare of, which just is the way my life goes. Uh, but if we look in here, up the top we've got all our uh, three our filaments, and I've got a little sachet in there to stop it from getting moist 
And then down the bottom we've got all our 3D prints so that they don't get dusty. Uh, but yeah, pretty, pretty good cabinet. Next. Apparently there is a way to improve the amount of poop you get, which is this purge calibration test made by this um, Kyuff, Kyuff, Siuff, Siuff, whatever that name is. And you choose two colors and it prints it out and then it'll show you the gradient and then you determine how much to change your flushing volume by, by the number that's on. I'll show you when it prints out. And it's printed, but this seems to be our first time, because it's so thin, uh, it's actually stuck to the build plate. So this might be the first time we have to use our scraper. So if we just get the scraper in, oh, there we go. Get off. That's one. That's two. So I've got a cute little otter keychain here using the brown and the gray, which is why I printed these specific purge cards. Uh, so what you do is you come in here to flushing volumes and you go from the gray to the brown. It starts transitioning around 50 and then by about 100, it's fully brown. So if you go a bit safer and put in like, I don't know, it's already on 108, so if we just make that 100, and then we come to the brown to gray one, gray to brown, and then around, what's that? Make that like 125. That should save a fair bit of filament. Not to mention, you can also come in here to others and uh, flush into objects infill as well. And then if we slice that, the original uh, print without the changing of the flushing volumes and without the uh, object infill was 28.68 for the flushed and then 14.38 for the tower. And then the new one is 16.09 uh, and 10.16. So we're actually saving a bit, which is good. And there it is. I actually used the original settings for this one because I wanted to show you something. This is the time-lapse with the original Bamboo A1 camera. It looks like shit. So I actually bought a time-lapse kit that you can plug in your own camera to and to make the time-lapse quality hopefully better. It's just a little circuit board that you purchase and then you print the casing for it. So this little button, you're supposed to print in PTG transparent, but I'm not spending $35 just to print a button. So we're just gonna make that PLA. And then this goes in there like that. The lid goes on top like that. And then you have some screws. You actually need an Allen key for these screws and I couldn't find an Allen key that came with it. Uh, I managed to find one in the original kit that I bought when I bought the Bamboo A1. So if you threw this out, best of luck to you. And then there's just a little cover that goes over the top like this. That slides and closes the circuit board for you. And then you just take the cable, uh, plug it in to this end and then plug it into the back like you did with the AMS, if you had an AMS and you plugged it in like I did, then just do the same thing with this. Oh, fuck. So the cable shoots, so the cable shoots out this way. And so if you put it in the second slot, it gets in the way. So you're gonna have to switch them over. And then all you need is a camera. I have my old ass Canon 5D here, which does not have Bluetooth. Uh, so I had to buy a cable to connect the time-lapse kit to the camera. I thought the time-lapse kit came with the cable, but I don't know why I thought that. That would be insane. So you just have to plug this into that. And it's plugged in. Uh, it's being stretched like crazy, but that should be a better time-lapse now. So the time-lapse is done. I'm not sure why, but it skipped a large chunk towards the end and just missed a couple of, like probably like 30 minutes of printing. But 
it does look a lot better. I just need to figure out why it skipped that large chunk of printing. And they're both done. Uh, they both look exactly the same. These are the towers that they printed out and I cannot see a height difference at all, but I don't know. And then the amount of filament they printed, that one for without the settings, like the flushing settings and uh, the flush into the model. And then that one with the flushing settings. I cannot visually see a difference. I also could have printed the same model with the same settings twice. That is something I would do, but I don't think I did. Anyway, the, the otters also have little magnets in their hands. Look, so they can grab onto each other. So you can have one for one, for one person and one for the other person. And then when you walk past each other uh, with your keys out, holding them in front of you like this, and you walk past each other, they can grab onto each other. It's a very specific situation to be in, but hey, to each their own.